So we get to finally talk about our first iPod of this specific year. And this is actually the latest iPod, the iPod Touch 7th generation. Now what's interesting about this specific device is that it looks like it's going to be one of the last iPods that Apple's actually going to make. Now this is kind of sad, but it's also kind of expected. The iPod lineup has really not meant as much now more than ever. I mean, all of our devices can play music and that was one of the best selling points of the iPod, but especially when you consider the fact that a lot of the music is not stored on our devices anymore. It's pretty much through streaming networks like Spotify, Apple Music, and different things like that. It really doesn't make too much sense to buy an iPod unless you're giving it to like a kid who doesn't want to use a phone, if you don't want to get a phone for somebody, if you want to just have like a Wi-Fi device or if you want to use you know a device that you can you know make iOS apps on that's another big reason why I've seen people buy iPods other than that it really makes no sense to pick one of these things up now externally this thing looks pretty much the same thing as the last couple of generation iPod touches you do have that four inch panel on the front which is still actually pretty decent it doesn't look like an ugly panel by any means and I think that's one of the more interesting things about these iPods the panels are still good and Apple actually put almost the same panel that they have on the, their iPhones at that time on these you know iPods which is really nice now now this iPod came out in 2019 so this approaching three years old it did come out you know the same year as something like an iPhone 11 iPhone 10R, but this thing had the same panel as something like an iPhone 5S, which I don't think is a big deal. Now you have a lot of bezel on the top and bottom of this thing, which is expected, you know, for this day and age. It also has that home button as well. Now it's funny because every time I see a, a you know, a device with a home button nowadays, I just assume that it doesn't even have a touch screen, which I just, I don't know why that keeps happening. I always think you have to maneuver through the whole entire UI with the home button, but that's not the case here. It is a touch screen device. You have the lightning port at the bottom and a headphone jack too, which is really cool. This was one of the first I guess portable devices Apple made again that did have a headphone jack re-enabled in it. Now on the back you have the aluminum back which still looks pretty good. I mean there's not too much to complain about there and you do have that single camera setup on the back. You also have a front facing camera as well and overall on the body it's not an ugly looking pan you know it's not an ugly looking device. I think I've said this before but it is pretty much the same thing as the previous iPods. You know every single iPod that's came out before this for the most part pretty much looks like this in some form or fashion. You did have you know a smaller design and it's really thin. It's a really really thin device too. It's much thinner than a lot of iPhones that are coming out nowadays so that's another big thing to keep in mind too so in terms of the outside that pretty much covers it up now in terms of the camera setup there's really not a whole you know bunch of points to like just keep hitting on this camera over and over again but it does have that 8 megapixel you know back facing camera and then on the front it does have that 1.2 megapixel front facing camera now here's the thing with this specific device i actually don't think it's like a bad camera by any means and the fact that it's still getting software support i think kind of helps it because maybe it helps you know increase the quality of these specific lenses too over time you know in terms of software but the thing is like if you're trying to get this you know ipod touch because of the camera i don't think that's going to necessarily be the best approach i think you know thinking to yourself this thing has a camera but i'm mostly using it for you know music or something else then that's a pretty good thing too and the that camera I mean you can do a couple of things you know it can take photos it can take videos if you want to do snapshots or TikToks or something this you know iPod touch can do it however it isn't the best quality and even something like an iPhone 6s from 2015 can give you a better camera than this iPod touch that came out in 2019 so that is a really big thing to keep in mind you can record you know 1080p videos at up to 60 frames per second too which is pretty interesting and overall I mean it's a camera it gets the job done I wouldn't necessarily use it on an everyday basis but I think if you have to use it then go for it but it wouldn't be my first choice like I mentioned before on top of that that front facing camera is actually better than you would think you know as I mentioned before this is not a bad camera setup on this iPod when you consider you know everything but it is a bad camera in this day and age you know it's just not a good camera anymore and even if you could pick up something like an iPhone success like I mentioned that's probably going to get you a better camera than this thing but I, would, I wouldn't recommend buying an iPhone success I'd probably recommend buying an iPhone 7 but that pretty much covers it up in the camera standpoint now another big thing with this device is the you know performance within it actually the longevity is even more important this iPod touch is pretty much going to last exactly as long as an iPhone 7 and the reason for that is because this thing has the same chipset as the iPhone 7 so in reality however long that device lasts the iPhone 7 lasts is how long the iPod touch you know seventh generation is going to last and in my opinion, 
I think that's going to end off probably around iOS 16. Apple is still currently selling this iPod Touch, you know, in the Apple Store, and there are actually a lot of devices that have that A10 Fusion chip inside of it. These include those iPhones, those iPods, and there's some iPads that have this chipset too. So it doesn't make any sense to me why Apple would just, you know, cut short this lifespan. They kept the AHX chip for a very long time, so I kind of see them doing the same thing with this specific device. I could be totally wrong, but that's kind of what I see them doing with the iPod Touch 7 Generation 2. So in terms of longevity, I think at the very earliest, it's going to end with iOS 16. So you still have another about two years to use this device before it's fully outdated in terms of full OS updates and security updates as well. So in terms of that, that covers it up there. Now in terms of the performance side of things, this device, like I mentioned, has that Apple A10 Fusion chip inside of it with two gigabytes of RAM. And I think this iPod Touch is a decent performing device for its price tag, for what it is, and for the age of the chipset inside of it. It is pretty much the same thing as an iPhone. 7 that I mentioned like 30 different times. It is a pretty decent performing iPod, but again, I don't know even too many people who are using iPods nowadays, but on top of that, people aren't really picking up iPods for their performance. So even though this thing's, you know, chipset is okay for the most part, it's definitely not a great performing chipset, and even something like an iPhone 8 is going to get you better performance than this thing. So it doesn't really make too much sense to buy this thing if you're trying to get the best performing chipset or best performing device. You can buy an iPhone or use the iPhone and still use it as an iPod. There really isn't any advantage of picking up this thing over an iPhone, even if you're trying to keep it as a Wi-Fi device or whatever. You can still use this thing for that for the most part. So that's a pretty big thing to keep in mind from what I've seen. On top of that, things like, you know, random gaming and then Snapchat and, you know, doing things like that. This iPod can handle it for sure. Obviously, it's going to be glitchy and it's going to be slow. But my biggest concern is that smaller display. I like having a bigger display for the most part. And with something like the iPod Touch, you're kind of getting like a smaller device. And, you know, some people prefer that. I kind of like having something a little bit bigger. So that's a big thing to keep in mind. But if you're okay with this, then you should be okay for the most part so in terms of performance that pretty much covers it up there now ending it off with the battery life from my experience this thing's battery life actually was pretty decent for how big it and how thin it was i was not expecting this thing to be you know having that good of battery life but here's the thing it's not that great I don't want to give the impression that this thing is like really, really good. That is not the case at all. It's like pretty, pretty average. It's like pretty average. But the one thing I like about it is because of its small size, it actually gives the impression that it's actually, you know, better than it is. So definitely not amazing. I wouldn't recommend buying this iPod Touch because of the battery, but it is pretty interesting of how decent the battery life is for how old and kind of how old this chipset and how small this battery life is. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up there. And to kind of sum up this video, I'm going to be honest, I think something like the iPod Touch 7 generation generation is kind of good in 2022. I mean, it really depends, you know, are you planning on getting this iPod Touch to use on an everyday basis or something? Because if you're trying to do that, I mean, you might as well pick up an iPhone. I don't really see any situation where an iPod Touch beats the iPhone, you know, even an iPhone 7. It just doesn't really make too much sense to me. You might as well just go and buy an iPhone 7 or something like that, even an iPhone success. You're going to be getting a much better performing device and just a much better device overall on something like an iPhone 7 than on an iPod Touch 7 generation. They have the same chipsets, and even though you can walk into the Apple store and buy an iPod Touch 7 generation, I probably wouldn't recommend buying it anymore. The newer device, I mean, it just doesn't make too much sense to buy an iPod Touch anymore in this day and age, to be honest. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.